This Cheltenham, don't feel like a punter, feel like a favourite, with a completely free £5 bet on any race on day three of Cheltenham. Paddy Power! Max one £5 free bet per customer per day. T's and C's of light. 18 plus. Be gamble aware. Talk. So day two of the Cheltenham Festival 2021 and Ruby Walsh and I are going to look back on it on this Road to Cheltenham wrap of the day. Where to start today, Ruby? Because there were some fantastic results. I am. We have to start, Lydia, with, with the with the big race and the mare that I didn't want to run on the race that I would have run in the mare's chase. Uh, we have to start there with her. Uh, she was so tough, so game and horses for courses. It wasn't for Shaq and Pursua and it most certainly is for Put the Kettle on. Yes, let's start w w with the winner. And uh, I'm glad you've acknowledged no Pat Mrs. Paddy Power Chase. Grade one winner in a grade one race over two miles. But it really is her domain, isn't it? The way she jumps and her tenacity as well as her ability. It's that combination that gets her there. It is, it is. And she, she didn't have rally from the back of the last. Um, Shaq and Porswell got a great run through on her inside off the bend to the second last and looked like the race was his. But she is ultra tough. Um, Noob Negra was flying home. Um, the time, I don't think, it was overly quick. Um, I haven't watched the comparisons yet, but look, she was, she's the winner and she was so tough. The Grand Annual was quicker than the Queen Mother Champion Chase, which obviously it shouldn't be. So it was, it was a bit of a crawl. What impact do you think? Who was most disadvantaged, do you think, by that? I, I don't know who was most disadvantaged. Um, I don't know. Look, what 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 was unlucky? So right, so right, got got hampered. But yeah, we see the real unlucky one. He probably is. He was the unlucky one in the in the race. But what did it? I don't know what it it, it hindered. I don't know if it hindered anything. Lydia, to tell you the truth, it, it, since so right was looked the unlucky one, but the rest of them were all there with their chance to out. Do you think that Harry Skelson could have done anything differently on Nuba Negra? No, he elected to follow Paul Townend and. He followed him through. He looked a very fast horse in Kempton and he rode him for speed. He came home really well. He climbed the hill. Of course, he's going to think he should have done something differently, but um, I'm not sure. I didn't think when the race went, went by, I didn't think, oh, the second was unlucky or what happened to the third. I thought, I thought the winner was just brilliant. It'll be great to see the two of them back. But how about Shaq and Bassoir? I, I spoke to Paul Townend afterwards and obviously he was really disappointed and he felt that Shaq and Bassoir just wasn't there do you think it was just a, one of those under performances or do you think the track doesn't suit maybe it was the pace too he, he was a bit keen um he jumped well but like when he got the he got some run he got, he got a dream run through and quick enough and he didn't find uh, and I don't know why you'd have to think he underperformed looking at the Leperstown Christmas race when he's so far in front to put the kettle on I don't think with any kind of foresight, you could have saw that big a swing in the distances. And um, yeah, so maybe it was the track, but I think he underperformed. Speak for yourself, Ruby, speak for yourself. But Shaka Baswar, maybe, maybe the tight turning track, the adjusting right, the hill. I mean, the hill has been thrown at Shaka Baswar a few times, but Willie Mullins was saying that he just felt that the horse was just flat. He's, he's wondering whether he left it behind in the Dublin chase. Yeah, but maybe he did. Maybe he did. Um, and he came here this year with three runs rather than two. Maybe he was just flat. But um, unfortunately, we'd have to digest that a bit for a bit longer. Yes. Yeah, so uh, that was one that got away for Rich and Susanna Ritchie. But they saw Monkfish win the Brown Advisory again. I don't think. I mean, it was a. It, he's a really exciting horse. But again, I, I didn't feel he was as suited by this track as he might be when he comes back for the Gold Cup next year. Yeah, I I, um, I don't think he performed either. Um, Quite. He put down at the second fence. Uh, he, he let a couple of times, and Paul thought he would go and take another stride. He stood off once or twice, and Paul asked him to stand off. He went in, but I suppose like good horses, they can just when they're not at the top of their game, they deliver, and he still managed to. Um, lucky at the last, but I don't think we saw the full potential of Monkfish, but he still won. I totally agree. Uh, a, a good horse, a sign of his superiority that he was still able, able to do that. And just the concern for Paul Townend was the loose horse when a clad rear and uh, Rachel Blackmore parted company. He was just in the way the whole time, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he jumped to second last. You could see Paul trying to have a race with him to get by him, going to the last, so he'd be in control of what happened. He couldn't. A clad rear got in front of him. They were thinking, don't come any closer, don't come any closer. <laughs> and even Monkfish got worried a little bit out of it um, and was indecisive at the last but um, no it was it was 
wasn't great watching Lydia. <laughs> yeah, he got distracted at the last. Good performances, solid performances from Colin Tizard's pair, uh, from Fiddler on the Roof in particular, who has got that hardened experience. And the big breakaway tried to force it for some way. Yeah, and more like what we'd saw of them back in October, so October, November time, Fiddler on the Roof and, and the big breakaway. Um, two, two decent stay on horses who look to be coming back to form. Yes, I'm sure they've got uh, bold futures ahead of them. How about the opening race, which saw Bob Ollinger all class for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore? He was. Um, he looked at an ace when he beat Blue Lord and he delivered. Um, he, looks, he looks an exceptional horse, doesn't he? Um, he has the marsh written all over him, I'd say. Um, he's an incredible horse. He's not a, that's a too big a word, but he, he was just very impressive. Yeah, he's got a nice look of scope about him and you can see him being a, a, a novice chaser. But what we really want is a clash, don't we, between him and Appreciate It and yet they could go their separate ways next season. They could for a while. Um, having said that, Bob Ollinger did look like he could come back in trip. He travelled really strongly and he had a really good turn of foot. Um, and look, the same horse is the only horse that beaten both of them and that's Fernie Hollow. Yes, uh, a significant absentee, and it'll be interesting to see what he can produce when he comes back. It was early season form, though, so we'll yeah. have to see where, where they now stand. Yeah, but, yeah I know, yeah, he, but he, he beat appreciated in the bumper last year, and he beat Bob Ollinger this year, so yeah, I'd say he's exciting. And there are a few horses that truly merit the word legend, but Tiger Roll certainly does. That is a fifth wow. Cheltenham Festival success, his third cross-country chase win, to so add to just a couple of Grand Nationals. And it was just role reversal from last year, where Easy's Land got in front and dragged Tiger Roll. This year, around Tiger Roll got in front and dragged Easy's Land. Um, I thought Tiger Roll's jump and his enthusiasm. I was delighted for Keith Donahue as well. But the horse was was brilliant. He's a brilliant little horse. And look, I'm sure your pals in the BHA handicapping department are pretty chuffed at themselves right now. <laughs> uh, that's the that's the the sad note, isn't it? That we're not going to get to see him in the Grand National. But you know, he does seem to retain all of his ability. Yeah, but they stuck to their guns and they stood they stood by what they believed, mm. and it was fully justified for them. Yeah, it was. And but you could tell that um, Tiger Roll was on it today, couldn't you? From the that slight change in in tactics, the different position that Keith had him in. Yeah, but I thought he was on it now in the last day. He travelled so he well did. in that hurdle rest to the third last, and then all of a sudden just stopped. So um, you were watching him thinking, for me anyway, I haven't watched him in Avon, I was thinking, is he going to stop? Is he going to stop? And then he was getting further and further and further. You're thinking, no, off the bend. And, and even away, on the, going out in the last loop, he injected a bit of pace into it and Keith was trying to slow him down. You're thinking, God, this horse is loving it. He's such a dude of a horse. He's fantastic. That's exactly what he is. <laughs> um, how about heaven help us? Can you, could you ever imagine that a coral cut could be one like that? No, I couldn't. I made a, a bit of a fool of myself in television showing where the last the last five runners were for them had come from so far back. Um, but I couldn't believe it. With the standing start, I wonder did everybody get in the position they wanted to be in? Because it looked to me like the horses in that were sitting second, third, and fourth didn't really want to be that handy, and it left heaven help us with a really easy lead. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, Richie Condon just got it at the start, didn't he? And it was just, uh, he was sort of shell-shocked afterwards to win yeah. a race like that. Yeah, and like Paul Hennessy, Hennessy's a, uh, a great character and doesn't have that many horses. And it was brilliant for the two of them. It was uh, wonderful to watch. But, but even when they turned down out of the chute into the two, at the two, towards a two-mile start, you could see how easily she was getting in the front. Paul's talking about the Stayers hurdle next season. Oh. You have to dream, Lydia. You have to dream. <laughs> you do. Um, Sky Pirate, I mentioned that really quick time for, for the Grand Annual, and he was superb today. And this is a horse that, you know, hadn't found much in the past, but that dropped back to two miles. It's really click for him. Yeah, and interestingly, when you look at look back at it, Sky Pirate and Tukas were just, were just front to halfway. Anything behind them never got into the race. The switch from the old to the new track uh, was apparent, and those that were able to sit front of halfway were in pole position. And it was great for Nick Schofield being able to get back on the horse because obviously you know what it's like. He's been battling back from, from injury, seeing other riders, you know, as this horse is really clicking. And he was, it was great for him to be able to get a festival success. Yeah, and look, I'm sure connections will tell him, don't worry, we'll put you back on, we'll put you back on. But as a jockey, till you're actually declared on it and you're, in the, and you're going to the Predator to get up on it, you always have a niggling doubt. Um, so I'm sure it was huge relief when he was back on Sky Pirates and it was brilliant that he got to deliver on him. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, the owner, Martin Tedham, has been such a supporter of Nick's down the years, putting him back on. And it's uh, one win for a British-based trainer on, the, on St. Patrick's Day. 
Yeah, but look, it it did it look that way before race, and like you, it was Brave Man's game versus Bob Ollinger and Galliard and Mez Neil. Monkfish was look standalone. Maybe the champion chase. You think if if, if Shacken doesn't win, what well, I was thinking, sorry, maybe not anybody else I was thinking if it wasn't Shacken, I thought maybe one of the English horses would win it. You know, it, it didn't work that way. Um, and then Dukas just got touched off the bumper. Gal, uh, Kilcross and Sir Gerhard looked like Sir Gerhard got it easy in front. You must love that ride that Rachel Blackmore gave to Sir Gerhard. I do. Um, and and he, all the way, even to line up, there's no pace. And she just knew exactly what she was doing. Look, it's to me, riding is, is, has always and will always be about tactics. Mm. And tactically, you have to do the right things. And she nailed them today. She did. She just, she's got him under control. He was a little bit keen early on. She got her fractions absolutely right. You knew that even though Kilcrook was bearing down on her, that she'd saved enough. You could tell from the race. Yeah, she, you could. And she, she just hung on. I'd said her two very good horses. Yeah, I agree. Exciting times for the Novice Hills next season, I reckon. And uh, at the end of day two, the halfway stage, Rachel Blackmore topping the jockey's table. Yeah, she is. Um... I want to want to. I just want to think, Lydia. What sort of ammunition does she have left to come? I know Paul is a Plutar, yeah, definitely. Uh, she's Alaho in the Ryanair tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I'm sure she has good rides, uh, but I think Paul Townend is a very strong book on Friday. Yes, and also he's got a, a glut of placed horses, which will which will count as well if it yeah. comes to a, a count back. And Willie Mullins, would you say you know, Team Mullins are they are they happy at the halfway stage? Yeah, of course they are, but a couple of winners and a lot of horses running well. But I'd say Shaq and Pussois, um definitely knocked the wind out of the sails a little bit. Um, you know, he was such a horse that we'd held him in such high regard. We hoped he'd go and deliver, and he didn't. And that does take the fizz out of it a little bit. Whereas Henry de Bromhead has three grade one winners under his belt already. I'm walking on water. Um, he's, they was, I had breakfast with himself and Red the Blackboard actually did. They were at the table across the way this morning and she was slagging him. Henry's in that good of humour at the minute. He was even taking the slagging. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, look, but he's done a wonderful job with them and he slightly got overlooked yesterday with Rachel riding the winner. But the, the way he has managed Tony Suckle's career, I think is, is, is outstanding. Like, there's never overfaced or has let her improve and then ran her in the race as she could win as she was improving hasn't overfaced her and look what she did yesterday that's brilliant absolutely and fortune favours the brave going for the grade one with the mayor as well today and he <laughs> <awarded>. <laughs> let, yeah, let but, that be a lesson <laughs> let that be a lesson no, noted <laughs> well it's been a fantastic day thanks for sharing your thoughts I look forward to seeing you tomorrow cheers Lydia This Cheltenham, don't feel like a punter, feel like a favourite with a completely free £5 bet on any race on day three of Cheltenham. Paddy Power. Max one £5 free bet per customer per day. T's and C's of 18 plus. Begumbleaware.org.